About a month ago, I took my subs out and man, it sucks not riding with bass. And since I can't make up my mind between four six and a halves and two of these eights, I decided to take one of those tens and build the box for it. Now this TZ2100 does a thousand RMS at two ohms and my dual fork takes a thousand RMS and can be wired down to two, so it's perfect. It's gonna be a magic number that you're gonna see anytime you're building an enclosure and it's gonna be the number 1728. So 1728 is how many cubic inches is inside one cubic foot. You get this number by multiplying your length times width times depth and then divided by 1728 and that gives you how many cubic feet your enclosure is gonna be. For example, your dimensions are 10 by 15 by 20. You would do 10 times 15 times 20, which would give you 3,000. 3,000 divided by 1728 is going to give you 1.74 cubes. And now that we understand that, we need to find our woofer displacement. The woofer displacement is basically how much volume is that sub going to take up. Your box is supposed to be 1.5 cubes, but you didn't account for the woofer displacement. When you put that driver in, it's going to take up some of that 1.5 cubes, which means it's going to throw your tune in off. Use a DIY audio and video.com speaker driver displacement calculator. The main thing that you need is going to be your cone diameter and the mounting depth, but all of these little optional ones, I like to put those in just like I have an extremely accurate reading. Go to calculate. My driver displacement is 0.1 cubic foot. So now that we know how to calculate cubic feet and find our woofer displacement, it's time to measure out the trunk so we can find out the maximum dimensions that we can use to build our box for our 10 inch sub. This is gonna be the most important part because it's gonna let us know how much space we actually have to work with. One of the worst things you can do is only measuring the inside of the trunk. Let's just call that 59 inches from left to right. But on the opening of the trunk, we only got about 49 inches. So if we made that thing 59, like I said, on the inside, that box will not fit. It's best to go ahead and measure out the opening of the trunk. That way we know when we make our box will actually fit inside and we can do all our maneuvering inside the trunk. I'm going to take off about a half an inch since I'm actually inside that little latch part. It's going to be at about 20 so we're going to go ahead and say 19 and a half. I'm going with a smaller subsystem is because I want more trunk space so even though this right here is about the halfway point I don't want to make my depth any more than about 15. The thing we have to account for is moving parts. This right here is going to move when the trunk goes up and down so I want to make sure I measure up to this point just so I can get the accurate height. It's 18, but we'll call it 17.5. So with those dimensions put into our equation divided by that magic number 1728, we know that our external volume is 7.44 cubes. To get the net or the internal volume, we have to minus 1.5 from each one of these numbers to account for our wood thickness. We're using three quarter inch birch and each one of these dimensions has two sides to that box. So our new internal is going to be 5.94 cubes. So we cover how to calculate volume, woofer displacement, and we've talked about how to measure out the trunk. So now we want to get into our box building program. When ISD is a free box building program that allow us to look at the output and response curve of the enclosure that we desire to build to the specs of our sub. When we open this up, it's gonna give us this small graph. The first thing I do is drag it out like that. Then when we come up here to new, I already have some preloaded subs inside of it. And even though it's a lot of subs, these are all old school subs, it's an old program. I wanna click on new, and it wants us to put in all the TS parameters. So TS parameters or Theo small parameters are just a set of specs that's gonna describe how that sub is gonna perform. And usually you can find that somewhere inside your manual so so now that I've named it and I put all the parameters that I actually have I want to go ahead and click OK and then close it out so now when I go to new to be able to come down here to the Tesla 1.5 K10 and then right here is going to ask you how many drivers are we doing this for so you can build a box for a hundred subs if you want but we just have the ones then it's going to take you to this box type menu. So the EBP stands for Efficiency Bandwidth Product. And all that basically means that depending on where this number is, it will be better for this sub to be in a ported or a sixth order bandpass. And if it's lower down here, it would be better in a closed, which would be just a sealed box or a fourth order bandpass enclosure. There, but I can change it if I wanted to. But I want to keep it ported. Then we're going to go to Finish and it shows us a small curve. What I wanna do is move that menu out the way of the curve and then I wanna come over here to plot. I wanna change the color to something that's gonna show up a little bit better and I also wanna change the width of it as well just so I know my line is a lot thicker. 
Then we're gonna click on box. So right here, it shows a volume of right about half a cube. Let's just see what 1.5 cubes is gonna do for us. And I don't wanna tune it to 30, you probably do like 33 since 33 is around the FS of the sub. This red line is right at about zero dB. So it should probably perform good around 29 Hertz. It will probably peak at about 33 or 34 Hertz. And then it will smooth itself out around 75, which is okay because I'm gonna set my crossovers at 80 anyway, so that's good. I got a slight dip, but I'm not too worried about that because all this 116 hertz, I don't want my sub playing in anyway. As you guys remember before, our maximum measurements was about 49 wide, 17 and a half high, and we wanted to make sure that we're not too deep, so we did a depth of about 15. But since we're building the box just for 110, we don't need the box to be that big. So we're just gonna try some numbers inside our calculations and see if it actually works. I don't want the height to be any bigger than about 12 inches. We're gonna stick with the depth of about 15 inches, even though the depth is probably gonna change. And we're just gonna plug a number in with about 28 wide just to see if it's gonna work. Now, we need to minus 1.5 from each one of these numbers because we need to account for wood thickness. We're gonna get a new internal measurement which is going to be 26 and a half 10 and a half and 13 and a half now if we multiply all of our internal measurements together we're going to get 3756.375 we need to divide that by our magic number 1728 to get a new measurement of 2.174 cubic feet which is going to be the new internal volume of this measurement right here. Now inside our box building program, we can go over here to vents and this is gonna allow us to mess with the port. You can go from a circular port, like if you want to do an arrow port or something like that. And this is gonna let you know if you choose to have a diameter of that port of six, it needs to be about 41 inches long. And then it's gonna have a vent mock of about 0 0.03. So what the vent mock is, is gonna let you know if your port is gonna have any port noise. You Usually you want to keep this number in the green. I like to keep it anywhere between 0 0.03 to 0 0.5 just to make sure that it's still going to be musical. Now we change it to one. Then you see how that color is going to be red. That means you're going to get a lot of port noise. We're not going to do any type of arrow port, so I do want to do a slot port. So I'm going to change this from circle to square. And right here, we want to make sure we put our internal height of the enclosure that we want to build. So it's going to be 10.5. And then over here, we just want to check with the number to try to get this in between 0 0.03 and 0 0.05 to Oh, so that's perfect. It's gonna be 0 0.04, and our vent length is gonna be 29.39. So let's put this inside of our equation and make sure that this works. So to calculate our port displacement, we wanna take our interior height times the port width, which is what we put inside of our box building program. We wanna add that by 0.75, and that's gonna be for wood thickness. And we wanna multiply that by our port length that got spit out, of course, by our box building program. So now we're looking at this number. That divided by our magic number, 1728, is gonna give us a port displacement of 0.49 cubic feet. So now we wanna add up the volume that we wanna give our sub, which is 1.5 cubes, our woofer displacement, remember that's how much the sub takes up, which is 0.1 cubes, and our port displacement that we just found out, which is 0.49. Add those all together, we're gonna to get 2.09, which is our new total internal volume. Now we need to take that number, multiply it by our magic number, 1728, which is gonna give us this. We need to divide this number by our interior width, which is gonna give us that number. We need to divide that number by our interior height, which is gonna give us this number. And this number right here is gonna be the new depth for our enclosure. Our new interior depth is going to be 13. And if we add 1.5 to this 13, it's gonna give us 14.5. Now I know the actual number is 12.98, but I'm gonna round it up to 13 because if I'm honest, that 0 0.02 is not gonna throw my tuning off. I'm not trying to go into I'm not trying to go into any type of SQ competition. I just want base. So we're just gonna round it up for 13 so it makes my cut sheet a thousand times easier. Calculate our ports. So we're gonna label this P1 and P2. P1 is gonna be the first piece of wood that goes this way. P2 is gonna be the bend and the piece of wood that goes that way. So P1 is gonna be your interior depth 
minus the port width. Our interior depth is 13. Our port width from our program is two inches. So 13 minus two is going to be 11. Now port, now P2 is gonna be our port length, which is the 29.39. We got that from our program. Minus P1, which is what we just got right here, that's gonna be 11. Minus P, minus the port width, which is two inches. We got that from our program. Minus 1.5, which is going to be the wood thickness. That comes out to 14.9, but like I said earlier, we're just gonna round it up to 15 so it could be easy. And now we can get into making our cut sheet. So the front piece of wood and the back piece of wood is gonna be the exterior width by the exterior height, which is going to be these two numbers right here. The top and the bottom piece of wood is gonna be the exterior width by the interior depth, which is gonna be these two numbers right here. The sides of our box is gonna be the interior height by the interior depth, which is gonna be these two numbers right here. First port wall is gonna be your interior height by P1. So that's gonna be our interior height, which is 10 and a half by this number. And our P2 wall is gonna be interior height by P2, which is going to be this number. And that right there, I couldn't even make that, that, that sucks, I can't even. And that right there, guys, is going to be our cut sheet. Now we can go to Home Depot and buy some wood. So that's gonna be it on part one for actually figuring out how we can get to the cut sheet. Part two is gonna be buying the wood, cutting it, and then vinyl wrapping it or wrapping it up in carpet, whatever we wanna do for our enclosure. I hope when you guys ask somebody to build you an enclosure, you understand why they may charge you because there's a whole lot of math that's involved with getting you the proper enclosure that's gonna get you the results that you want for the specs of your sub. So the next box that I build, I will not be doing it myself. I have a friend named Drew Jones who owns Baseaholics, and I'd rather just pay him for him to give me this right here just so it makes it a whole lot quicker and easier but if you guys found any type of value in this video please hit that like button don't forget to subscribe share comment if you want to at this time i would like to take the time to thank anybody who chooses to support the channel whether you guys get that patreon or a fan subscription from the website or you hit those links in the description all that stuff goes a long way with me and i greatly appreciate it so until next time it's your boy jp signing out telling y'all to keep going keep growing and have a blessed day we'll catch y'all on Part two, peace.